friends, I am back and I wanted to do or take some time in this video when it came to thinking of things not to do after weight loss surgery. I really wanted to compile the things that I've seen work for other people, things that haven't worked for other people, things that worked for me and what haven't worked for me and try to share with you guys the best of my ability on what not to do after weight loss surgery. They're in no order whatsoever, and I just wanted to, I'm not giving you like a list of five or 10, I just am going to share with you what I have accumulated. Just wanted to currently let you know where I'm at. Uh, I am almost two years out from surgery. My surgery was November 20th of 2017, and it is currently September 30th, 2019. My surgery weight was 200 and no, ha, huh, my surgery weight was 347 pounds and I'm currently at 233 pounds and I am five feet six inches to give you a little bit of what I look like. I have noticed that pretty much after nine months after having my surgery is when I lost the bulk of my weight and ever since then I've pretty much stayed in between 233 to 237 give or take and so that has been my process so far but to start off I wanted to share with you what not to do with after your weight loss surgery for starters do not drink soda we are told this all the time and you know a lot of times we're told things and we're not really explained why but this is what I've gathered and let me be honest I love a good icy I love a good slurpee all of that all of that is carbonated. Soda is not just, they're talking carbonated water, no carbonation. And so I have noticed a lot of people who've had like the sleeve surgery who feel like these rules don't apply to them and they'll go ahead and they will drink soda. And for a while they feel fine. They are living their best life with very little changes. However, over time I've watched them and I feel like it's a pathway to lead other things in that you shouldn't be digesting or using as well and it's just harmful. It actually expands your stomach. It's not good for you even if you haven't had weight loss surgery, but if you have had weight loss surgery, it's a definite no-no. And so um, I've noticed people that have had or drink soda after weight loss surgery, they give themselves allowances to other things and it, get, it builds up the cravings again for other things that aren't as healthy, it expands your stomach. I mean, there's just whole, a whole lot of problems when it comes to soda. So don't drink soda. One thing that should be a given is do not, not take measurements or pictures. I'm telling you guys, body dysmorphia is a real thing. I didn't necessarily do the measurements, but I have a lot of videos. I have a lot of pictures. I tried on a lot, like I, have a lot of things to look back to so when I have that body dysmorphia kick in I can easily look back and see that I'm clearly a different person and even as you guys will comment on my videos and point out it'll make me reflect and go back to some of them and be like yeah although I'm the same person I'm a better different version of myself so take those pictures do not miss the opportunity to take those up those pictures or even those measurements that help a lot of people as well so make sure you don't miss that opportunity after weight loss. Don't be ashamed and don't compare. I know we're told this all the time, but I watched a lot of Instagram stories on people who've had similar surgeries, if not the same surgery. I've watched, I've watched a lot of YouTube to try to get advice. I've, I've tried to follow what works for other people and hoping that it might work for me. There's this girl that actually I had been friends with who had a transfer addiction of alcohol and she has lost a significant amount of weight, way more than me. I mean, almost like 200 pounds. And she started at the same weight I was. I mean, she has lost so much weight. Some people even may question that she's unhealthy at this point, but she's been extremely successful. And um, I've watched the things she's eaten. She, as I've watched her, it's been really hard to not compare myself because I sit there and think, you know, even if you're doing the same thing as another person, you will get different results because all of our bodies are different. And that's another thing to keep in contrast and keep in mind is that, you know, all of us are different. Things might work for us that might not work for others. And so it's important that we look at people who are having significant success, not compare ourselves, but just take what you, they're doing and try to utilize it in our life or our, use it in our lifestyle to figure out maybe if it will or won't work for us. So it's important not to compare our results and compare our bodies 
two completely different bodies. So that has been something that I constantly have to work with. And also, don't be ashamed. And I'm talking don't be ashamed of having the surgery. Don't be ashamed of um, where you're at, how far you've gone, how far you haven't gone. Just don't be ashamed. Like if you're, That's also another thing that I work on when it comes to just like building, build our build us up, don't tear us down type of thing. So um, I think it's very crucial to make sure that we don't compare other people. We're not ashamed of our progress. However big or small it may seem, we're all on our different journey journeys. And that's something to definitely consider after weight loss surgery, that we won't be similar to another person. Even if we do exactly what they're doing, we will have completely different results. An important thing to consider after a weight loss surgery is something we're also told. And when it comes to not mixing our liquids with our solids and I hate this, I hate being told this, but it's so true. And it's only through experiencing it that I get it. I mean, because it's so hard to break that chain, especially throughout your whole life, you've been drinking and eating solids at the same time. And it's almost like you need one with the other. It's like the yin to the yang. I totally get it. But significantly after surgery, that small pouch you have is not able to compensate for both. So I can fairly tell you confidently that if I drink a big glass of water before I've eaten anything, it is a less um, there is a less chance that I will be able to eat um, what I'm used to eating after surgery. And so you need that nutrition, you need that nutrients, and so it's important that you do get in your solid foods before you eat or before you drink. And there have been times when I've gotten in all my solids and I felt like I was ready for that drink, so I take the plunge for that drink and I'm ready to guzzle and I'm throwing up because there's not enough room. And so it is important to make sure that, and, and it takes time to make sure you know what works, how much, I mean, fill your body out, figure out what's working. I mean, that all takes time in trying to experience what works for you. So that is something definitely um, that you need to do and make sure that you don't really mix the liquids and the solids because, um, you'll find yourself in some embarrassing situations. It's important to get your vitamins in. That is something you, that is significantly more important after weight loss surgery. Do not forget this. Um, a lot of people have had similar surgeries, same surgeries, and they become very malnutrient. Say the word. Anyway, malnutrient. Anyway, you know what I mean. And they either have a problem taking their vitamins because I know some people have to do chewables. Some people have to grind it up in shakes. I've never had a problem with still taking like a handful of vitamins. So for me, it's never been a problem. It's more been a problem on when to take the vitamins. A lot of times when you take vitamins on an empty stomach, you'll have the situation where you'll get sick for about an hour and it's just, it's just a hassle. So what I've realized that at night, I'm more likely to be more full. And so it's more important for me to actually take my vitamins at night right before bed. And that's been easiest for me regarding my lifestyle. So it's important, it's really important to pay attention. I mean, ultimately when it comes to all of this, Pay attention to all of the changes and pick up the differences of what you were like before weight loss surgery and what's going on after weight loss surgery. Your lifestyle will change. And so for me, one of those changes was I take vitamins at night, but I do make sure I take my vitamins. Do not forget that. That's significant after weight loss surgery. Also important is protein. Make sure you get your protein. And I'm not, I'm saying there's different ways to get your protein. You could use, you could get protein through liquid. You could get protein through solids. Make sure you keep the variety up. Make sure you have a consistency of protein. I actually donate plasma, which I love. It's easy. It's nice. It's cool. The extra money is awesome. But most importantly, it helps me keep on track on where I'm at with my protein. I always have to make sure I have enough protein, especially to donate. So I have to make sure that I am getting my eggs in or I am getting the cottage cheese in or the protein shakes or whatever. I'm always making sure that I have a variety of different proteins that I'm able to intake. And it's so important. Protein helps in so many different avenues. It helps with your hair. It helps with the elastic, your elasticity of skin. It helps with your muscle mass. I mean, protein helps in so many different avenues that you need to keep that protein up so as you're losing weight, your body won't look thrashed when you have lost the weight. And it'll keep your health 
regulated. And so protein is really more significant than they lead on. So do not hesitate to make sure you get that protein in after weight loss surgery. One thing I totally wish I would have done, and if I can stress this enough to anyone, oh my gosh. Okay, so to give you a little bit of background, after your surgery, a lot of surgeons will give you a list of foods that you can eat I don't know, a week or two weeks after surgery, might be soft foods, might be liquids for a little bit, and then graduate to soft foods, and then you get to more um, solid foods. You know, all these things that, you know, you have gradual steps before you can start eating again, but they also give you like measurements that you're supposed to be taking as a guideline of what you can and can't eat when it comes to what you're able to now with this new stomach. What I wish I would have done. Now, I totally obeyed that. I obeyed the rules when it came to eating so much liquid, eating the soft foods and then the solid foods. But what I didn't do, I wish I would have kept a diary of exactly what I ate from day to day. I wish I would have kept a diary on what I ate precisely, even if it didn't match the measurements that were um, given to me by my doctor. I wish that I would have known exactly, even if I ate the same thing for a week or two weeks, I wish I would have known I only had eight ounces of a soup. I only had half a uh, string cheese, whatever. I wish I would have written in a diary of exactly what I had to eat because now looking back, I would really like to know mentally what I'm able to survive off of because I know that I've actually grown and I've been able to eat more than what I did when I first had my surgery, but it would have been nice to have that element of being able to look back to see, oh, I was able to eat that much less and still survive because in my head, I feel like I'm not full unless I eat so much. And so it's also nice because for like two, five, 10 years down the road, you can look back and say, well, after my surgery, this is exactly how much I personally was eating after my surgery. And this is what I ate for a full week after my surgery. And this is how much I ate. That is one thing I wish I would have done because I'm not big at really calorie counting when it comes to like pay, like paying specifically specific attention to exactly what I'm eating all the time because at this point I roughly know what's and what and how much I can have of things. But at the same time, at the very beginning, I didn't know that. And so I wish I would have kept a diary so I could look back at any time in life. And even if I was trying to shrink my stomach, just what exactly I was able to get away with right after surgery. That is one thing I wish I would have done. So do not lose that opportunity to do that. Make sure you write down exactly what you're eating every day because you will want to keep that for years to come. At least I would have. And I wish I would have kept something like that so I could look back and see exactly what I was eating each day, probably for at least a month after my surgery. So I would know what I was eating in solids, what I was eating in soft foods, just what I was eating right after my surgery. That is one regret I have. I wish I would have kept that. Most importantly, I feel like it's important so much to stay accountable. Do not lose accountability. And I'm telling you, staying accountable to yourself, staying accountable to your doctor, staying accountable to the scale. Yes, the scale. I am almost two years out and I still every Sunday get on that scale. And I can tell you, I know how hard it is when you have blown a week full of junk food and carbs and you, the last thing you want to do is get on that scale. I completely understand, but you are at a different body and a different place than you were before. And so pri previously, prior to the surgery, I would have gotten on the scale and gained five pounds. Now in my head, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gaining five pounds and all this. And I step on the scale and I've only gained a pound. But if I'm not accountable to myself and I don't stay true and I'm not keeping on that scale, it's only a, a matter of time before I literally let myself slip and weeks and months go by and I lose out on knowing and being able to assess the previous week to figure out what worked and what didn't. And honestly, every week is a new chance to start over. I am the last person to say I'm perfect at this. I have no clue sometimes what I'm doing and I still like food. And so it's really important for me to look back and say, yeah, I probably had way too many hot chocolates this last week. And that's probably where a lot of my weight went. Or I just traveled and I'm gaining water weight or, you know, whatever. You have all these reasons. But even if you feel like you're going to gain 10 pounds on that scale, it is so important to stay accountable. And if you do have the doctors or the nutritionists that you're seeing or whatever, just stay accountable to yourself. 
Um, do what you can to just make sure that you're responsible for your actions. And sometimes that's the hardest part is literally staying accountable for what you've done. So that is hard. It's a mental game, but I tell you just stay on the scale. If you're not doing anything that you should be doing when it comes to eating, just stay on the scale. And, and at least you'll know from week to week what you're doing to create the results that you're having. Stay accountable. Do not let yourself not stay accountable after weight loss surgery. A couple other things, do not drink your calories. Now this has been hard for me because I love shakes, I, you know, I love the ices, I love the Slurpees, or I did before I realized they were carbonated. Um, yeah, I just love drinking my calories sometimes. And honestly, I'm not, I'm, I don't drink alcohol, alcohol at all, but I know there are some people out there that do drink alcohol and that has a lot of calories in it. So make sure that even though you may think that you're not eating, you're still drinking your calories. And that's very important to take into consideration because you may feel like, oh, you know, I don't feel as full for as long because I'm only drinking calories. But those calories still stick and they may not stick like they used to, but they still are sticking. So for me, it's always been important to actually have a full meal and feel the full sensation, feel like I have succeeded in filling myself with what I need nutrient wise and then letting it go through me. If you have like your stomach and you're constantly like drinking liquids and it's constantly going through you, it's still touching the calories that come through you. Like I said, not many of them will stay as they used to, but they still stick and you don't want to waste your calories on liquids. So just, just stay away from drinking your calories. And that brings me to another thing. Don't graze. Okay, grazing is so hard and everyone falls into the trap, including myself. But let me explain to you when it comes to grazing. It's very hard to keep track of what you're eating when you're grazing. And although you'll have that gratitude or that um, sense of accumulation for a little bit, but you're not completely full and you'll feel satisfied in your mind that that's enough, you do that so much, you probably will get so much more calories in during a day when you graze than if you would have just had your three meals or your six small meals or whatever. Even if you have six small meals, at least you're accountable for them. But if you graze, you easily lose track on what you're eating and not just what you're eating, but when your meals are, when you're really supposed to be hungry. I mean, there's a whole catapult of things that could happen if you graze and it just leads to disaster. And I feel like a lot of people who have had no success or very little success or have gained a lot of weight back, it's a tendency, a lot of it is due to grazing. And I wish I was without making that mistake, but I'm not. There's times I have to check myself all the time when it comes to grazing too, because I I am not perfect either, but that's something you have to watch out when it comes, because all of a sudden, like if you have an oral fixation, you wanna be chewing something all the time. If you can't eat as much as you used to, you wanna be sucking something, or I mean, it's just weird how your mind compensates what you're no longer able to feed yourself. So I'd watch out for that. Another thing to pay attention to, don't eat fast <laughs> okay i eat fast i inhale my food i don't know why okay i don't know why i inhale my food it's a nasty habit but let me tell you things have changed after weight loss surgery i am no longer able to do that or really bad embarrassing things happen okay so chew your food <laughs> chew your food and this will help in situations where you are not ready to tell people about your surgery this will help in situations when you're at social dinners and you don't want to be the first one finished with your food and it's not completely gone and you're watching everyone else eat. If you take your time and you chew your food, you're less likely to embarrass yourself awkwardly in so many different ways. Chew your food, okay? And eat slowly. Let it touch your stomach. Let it gradually fill you. There's been so many times where I feel like I've been so hungry and I remember being able to eat so much. So I will go and I will eat it all. <sighs> and I am going to the bathroom throwing up. Or I am sitting there watching other people and they're like, uh, do you want me to finish that for you? I mean, just eat slow. It's hard. It's been really hard for me, but I'm still practicing. So yeah, eat slow. Do not eat fast. One thing I've talked to you about before is 
listen to your body, pay attention. There are things that are gonna start happening to you that you have not had happen before. Me, the nose running, the chest hiccups, like these little things that never happened to me before, but they are little signs that my body's trying to tell me that I'm full and it's time to stop eating. Um, I think it's important to you specifically to figure out, you know, just notice little things. Even if you feel like it could be nothing, it could be something with your body telling you, look, we're full, or look, we're hungry, or look, that really didn't go down real well and we should avoid that food. Or you know what, now I have tons of gas from what I just ate, so maybe we should avoid that food. Like, it's just so interesting the way your body changes after the surgery that it's so important to pay attention to what your body's telling you. And I know I've said this before, but everyone's different and there'll be all different side effects that you're going through. But just pay attention because your body has a way of letting you know what you need. Even when it comes to what you need nutrition-wise. So anyway, just pay attention to that and make sure you realize what your body's telling you. Another thing that people have really fun times doing, which I would probably discourage, is a lot of people throw away a lot of their old clothes. Now, I'm not saying keep all your old clothes, and I know how fun it can be like buying clothes that actually fit you that are smaller and you have fun shopping all of a sudden. But I'm just saying, maybe keep a little bit of your old clothes because body dysmorphia is a real thing. And when it comes to body dysmorphia, you will love to be able to get into something and realize how far you've come. That has been something that I didn't even realize that I needed. Um, I have such a wide range of clothes that I have. Like, I have been yo-yoed my whole life, and so there's some things that I absolutely adore that I'm not willing to depart with when it comes to certain clothes. But I was trying to find things to work out in, and I thought, oh, these have always fit. I'm going to wear these workout pants. And I put them on, and I couldn't believe how big they were. And literally, in my head, I still felt like a freaking fatty. And so in my head, I'm thinking, I'm huge, I'm large, I'm going through these body dysmorphia issues. And then I try on these pants, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I... I am so, I've come so far. I mean, it was a shock. But I do encourage you to keep some of those old clothes because I think it'll be good when it comes to looking back and helping you in the times that are harder to realize just how far you have come. I think it's really important to keep those certain things. Now, last but not least, this is something that has been told to me that I absolutely hated. It was actually advice that was given to me before I even considered weight loss surgery. I was actually working with a nutritionist and he advised me to not date until I had hit my goal weight. Now, this is for all you single babes out there. He said, do not date until you have hit your goal weight. And I was sort of like really disgruntled with that because I was like, uh, you're not going to tell me what to do in my personal life because I mean, yeah, I'm sure I'm all about learning and getting the advice I need to succeed, but like, don't tell me who to date or when to date. Um, they were right. And let me tell you why I'm giving you the same advice. Um, I just got out of a relationship a couple months ago that I was in for eight months and it just sort of happens you know you start getting a lot of attention you start feeling yourself you start getting a little bit more confident and I ended up in this relationship and it royally messed with me in the fact I was super open and we had I felt like a really good communication. He knew what I had gone through. Who He knew what I was trying to achieve. It wasn't like we weren't openly talking about these things. But um, it was really difficult because a lot of my emotions are wrapped up into food. I'm an emotional eater. And so there was a lot of times whether things were good in the relationship I wanted to eat. When things were bad in the relationship I wanted to eat. When he was hungry and I necessarily wasn't. I wanted to eat with him so that we were doing something together. I know that sounds stupid, but that happened. And there was just so many things. I mean, yeah, sure it was nice when I couldn't finish my plate to like pass it to him and so he could finish it. That was nice. But honestly, I realized I wasn't prepping my food as much. I wasn't accountable to what I was eating as much. I was more eating on the fly. I was more eating like junk food because they made me happy. I mean, just all these things that just screwed things up royally. And I realized that as the two months have gone by that I have not been dating or in that relationship, it's been really nice because I've been able to collect myself and I have not hit my goal weight yet. So 
it's been really nice to be able to look back and be like, okay, now I can prep my food again and I can like get back on track. And I'm not saying this is for everyone and this advice might piss you off as well, but I'm not saying there's an ex there's no exceptions to the rules. I'm not saying any of that, but what I'm saying is that was the advice that was given to me a long time ago and I thought it was crap when I got it. But then that was when I was with a nutritionist and I started dating someone and we actually were doing the program together so it was beneficial for us at first. But then I remembered that advice as I got the surgery and it's because it was such a unique set of advice that I was just like so awkward. But then I realized as I hadn't hit my goal weight and I was still trying to achieve my goals as I got dating and got emotionally attached to someone, priorities tend to change a little bit. So yeah, that might be something you want to steer clear from. But anyway, when it comes to these things that I've thought of and these things that I've collected and heard or have experienced myself, I just wanted to share with you guys things that have helped for me, things that have worked for me, things that haven't worked for me, things just not to do after weight loss surgery. Now that I've gone through it and I know what it's about and I know at least somewhat what my body is doing, even though I'm still learning all the time, I just wanted to be able to have a solid amount of time under my belt after weight loss surgery to be able to help explain to anyone what they shouldn't be doing after weight loss surgery. Some things that I wish I would have done when it comes to keeping a diary of exactly what I ate up to a month after my surgery or the things that have helped me when it comes to staying away from soda and you know, taking my vitamins at night. I just want to make sure that the answers or anything that I have wanted or looked for in the past is easily more accessible to those people that are looking now. So if you like my videos, feel free to give me a thumbs up. And at the same time, I totally welcome your comments. I'm not the best at looking into the email when it comes to comments, I'll be honest. But all the comments that you guys give me on my videos, I totally appreciate. I have been floored on how amazing and, and loving and wonderful this um, whole society has been when it comes to just being uplifting and and it's just been so nice to hear your comments and your feedback. And if there's something that you would like to see, if there's a video that I'm not doing that you're curious about, please let me know. And I would love to help you out in any way I could. I've really um, enjoyed and I feel really good when people like tell me the things that I've said or done have helped you. So I, I literally would love to share anything I can. So I appreciate it. And like I said, I really appreciate you guys for watching and listening. And if I could help, you just let me know. Thanks for watching.